3.5 is about equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. So if you're someone who's like, I do not love geometry, I love algebra. This is an algebra section. So you will um, see how it relates to geometry here in a second. But the first thing we're going to do is talk about slope-intercept form. So somewhere in the top, you're going to write slope-intercept form, and then you're going to write y equals mx plus b. It really doesn't matter where you want to write it, but slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Essentially, if you ask anybody who graduates high school and you ask them what formula do you remember, uh, most of the time they will say y equals mx plus b. They may not remember what it's for, um, but just to prove it, I asked my husband this the other day, and I said, do you remember anything from math class in high school? He was not great at school, you know, and he said y equals mx plus b. Couldn't tell you what it was about, but y equals mx plus b. So slope-intercept form is what it is called, because guess what two things you can find in slope-intercept form? The slope and and intercept. So that's what you're going to label, starting with the letter M. The letter M is the slope. The letter M is the slope. There are four types of slopes, and we'll talk about them below. Uh, but slope is rise over run. Rise over run. It's how much you go up or down and then overrun, which is how much you go left or right. So whenever we get to the slope formula, you can remember this because which axis rises? The y-axis, right? And then which axis goes left to right? The x. So whenever we find the slope between two points, remember that the y's are on the top and the x's are on the bottom because it is rise over the run. So that is m. The letter B, y equals mx plus B, B is the intercept. It is the y-intercept. So make sure you're specific, the y-intercept. It is where the line crosses the y-axis. So B is the y-intercept. It is where the line crosses the y-axis. Because this is the formula of a linear graph. So the important parts are the slope, which is how much it goes up and over, but also it matters where the y-intercept is, and that is where we get the equation from. We're going to talk about the four different types of graphs. You have them below, and one of them is actually drawn wrong. I'll show you it when we get there. Um, have any of you ever been skiing? You have been skiing. Skiing or, or snowboarding? Skiing. Do you like to ski? You're pretty good. That's awesome. My younger, we went a lot as a kid um, because my family's from the north. My younger sister was always amazing at it. My older sister and I were meh. Um, and so I'll relate things to like a real ski slope um, here in a second because there are four different types of slopes with linear graphs. So if you see the first one, I think I outlined it because our printer didn't print it so well. Um, but you have this type of graph. You'll find it on your paper. All right. Um, we call this, you could think of this like a ski lift, you know. It's like lifting you up. Here in America, we le reread left to right, correct? So as it goes left to right, is it getting taller or smaller? It's getting taller. That's because this is a positive slope. So you can write the word positive. It is a positive slope. is a positive slope. All right, and then the next one, okay, as you go left to right, is it getting taller or smaller? It is getting smaller, so that means it is a negative slope. It's going downhill as you go left to right. This looks like, you know, there's like three different types of slopes. There's a green slope, and they're wide, and they don't have too, too steep of an incline or decline. Um, there's a yellow slope, you know, which gets thinner, and then more of an incline, some of them have jumps. And then, does anybody know what the hardest slope is called? It is not red. Red slope. It is not red. <laughs> so it's like a red, it's a green triangle, 
And then I think it's a yellow circle, maybe. And then the last one's a black diamond. Yeah, black diamond. They are very skinny. We'll talk about them in a second. I have been on a black diamond before. I'll tell you about that experience. But before you do any skiing, when you learn how to ski, they put you on a very flat and very open field. Does anybody know what this slope is called? The bunny slope. You just literally have the sticks, and you're just learning how to, you know, French, not French, yeah, French fry, I almost said French toast, French fry or pizza. If you want to go fast, do French fry. If you want to go slow, you pizza. I like the pizza a lot. Um, but we call this, this horizontal line, this is a zero slope. Zero. Zero, yeah, so I gave you a bunny. That's where that comes from. Under the word zero, you can write, Horizontal. It helps people remember the difference between vertical lines and horizontal lines. They both have the letter Z. As for your last picture, I think I accidentally outlined the X axis, which is not what's supposed to be outlined. Um, so if you want to fix it with your highlighter, um, it should look like this. Should look like that, just so you know. Um, this is a vertical line. Um, this is how I envision black diamonds to be. Um, so I'll give you like the example. A green slope is probably the width from my wall all the way across the hall, past Miss Alvarez, probably the width of the football field. Like, uh, you know, the, the small wide, the small ways. Um, and it's got a very small incline. It's very friendly. It's like fresh powdered snow. It's great to ski on. Then yellow gets a little skinnier. Um, and then there's a black diamond, which I skied. I've skied a lot of places, but um, the one that I accidentally skied on was in Colorado, which is in a mountain. It's not like fake snow. It's like the real, real stuff. Um, and the black diamond was probably half the size, like the slope itself, was half the size of this room. Whereas a green slope, though it, it, it like declines, but it's very straight, like very straight across. In yellow, like the ends kind of dip in, and then like the black, they're like very curved. And can you guess what lines the edge of really any slope um, on a mountain? Trees. Trees. So one time, my sister and I, my older sister, um, older sister, uh, were, were on a green slope, and somehow it crossed paths with a black diamond. And I could not tell you how, because I was just along for the ride, you know what I mean? Um, we turned on to the black diamond. And it's very easy to see once you're on it. There's, like, no going back uphill, you know what I mean? Like, it's just you're on it, you're on it. Um, and it's literally, like, it was like five feet-ish of like kind of flat, but there were jumps and there were icy bumps. And then it just like dips down. So like you need to stay in the one area. And it was also like lunchtime and I knew I had to meet my dad for lunch and I was starving. And so that doesn't help people who are hangry or, you know, doesn't help. And so I sat on my butt and I cried my way down the mountain. I just scooted. I just sat. And I just scooted, and I was crying. And all these adults were like, like I'm just laying there, and they're like, you doing all right, sweetheart? Do I need to call someone? And it's like, well, you already passed me, so no. Thanks for your help. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know, probably like 10, maybe oh, even younger, I don't even know. Um, but I was with my older sister, who was supposed to know what to do. She left me, so. <laughs> <laughs> so there was that. Um, so there was that. Uh, I don't have great experiences skiing. My younger sister is very good at skiing, but she's not very good at stopping. So there were, <laughs> there were times where I'd be at the bottom of the mountain, and one time she ran me over. Just did not, she could not stop. She ran me over. Um, I broke in a leg skiing. You just wake up, and you're like, you, everything hurts, and you're just like bruised. And that's skiing for me. But I do like to sled. I've never tried snowboarding. I don't know that I'm. Agile enough for that. But, anyways, this vertical line is how I envision a black diamond to be. Okay, so it is 
called undefined, but this is what it feels like to go down a black diamond. You're just, you're just wailing. You're just trying to figure it out. So those are the four types of slopes. Remember that we read left to right. That helps you to figure out if they're positive or negative. All right? So you have an example that looks like this. There will be one that looks like this on the quiz. The only difference is I gave you the points already, whereas on the quiz you'll have to be able to figure out what the points are yourself. So I will show you, remind you, slopes are rise over the run. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to take the y's, so y1 minus y2, over x1 minus x2. That is your formula. So you could put it in two different places, but that is the slope formula, and it's the formula we're going to use here. y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So which one of these do we want to call our first coordinate, A or B? You want to call B our first coordinate? You what? We can. I think that's not very fun, but it's fine. It's fine. We've labeled it. It is what it is. He wanted to be interesting. So we're going to call 6, 8, X, 1, Y, 1, 3, 2, X, 2, Y, 2. So what is my first y? 8. And then my second y? 2. Bless you. My first x? My first x? 6. Yeah. And my second x, which is 3. So the only thing I've seen people struggle with with this is are the signs, so make sure. We got 8 minus 2, which is 6. And then we have 6 minus 3, which is 3. This does reduce to 2. That is the slope. If you put 2 over 1, please know that 2 over 1 is not fully reduced. The final answer, whoop, the final answer is 2. Make sure you reduce all the way down to the best of your ability. I would highlight your formula so you could find it later on. We're going to use it a lot today. X1, sorry, Y1 minus Y2 over X1 minus X2. When you're ready, you can turn the page. So we're on the second page. This first one we should know. Parallel lines are? Coplanar and never intersect. Wowza. Fine. They're coplanar and never intersect. They're coplanar and never intersect. And then yours says parallel slopes, right? Parallel slopes. So parallel lines have to stay the same distance apart forever and ever and ever. So parallel slopes have to be the same slope. <coughs> I'd write down and then I would highlight it because it's, it's like the main point of this lesson. Parallel lines have the same slope. Parallel lines have the same slope. Parallel slopes are the same slope. What is that? Uh, no, that would not make sense. So degrees add up to degrees. Angles add up to angles. But a slope is, is a rise over a run. It's a fraction has nothing to equivalent with 90 degrees. I will tell you what perpendicular is in a second before we do parallel. You're just getting ahead of yourself. So I will tell you in a second. We're still on parallel. So parallel lines have the same slope. Here's why. As one of them, so we have two slopes here, or two lines. As one of them goes up one over two, the one below it will go up one and over two. So they'll have to have the same slope. Um, they have to be the same distance apart. How far apart are they here? That's four boxes. How far apart are they here? Still four. Here? Still four. Here? Still four. They will always be four boxes apart because both of their slopes, I kind of outlined it for you. What was the rise in their slopes? One. We went up one and then over two. So one over two. 
That was the slope on both of them. Okay, because as one goes up, the other one goes up. And as one goes over, the other one goes over. They stay the same distance apart. The same here, except for these are negative slopes. But again, they stay the same distance apart forever and ever because they have the same slope. Perpendicular, they do intersect and they form 90 degrees, but that doesn't tell me about their slope. Their slopes are the opposite sign and the flipped slope. Opposite sign and flipped. Opposite sign and flipped. Opposite sign and flipped. We can practice. Let's say seven eighths. Okay? Opposite sign. What is the opposite of positive? Negative, and then you flip it. Eight seconds. Yeah, that's all that it is. So here's a picture of the first one. What is the slope of, we'll say, this line? It says it. Yeah, negative one over three, right? Negative one third. And then what is the slope of the second line? Positive three. So here's why they are still the opposite sign in the flipped. Obviously, one of them is negative and the other one is positive. Here's what it means by flipped. What is every whole number invisibly over? It's over one. But we just, we reduce to the best of our ability. These are still perpendicular to each other. And then here's another example. Can anybody see what the slopes are? What's the rise? One, and then the other slope is? It's the opposite sign. Negative one. So I will show you the difference. This line is going up, right? This is a positive slope as it goes left to right. So this one has a slope of positive one, right? Up one over one, up one over one. But the other from left to right is going down. So the slope is negative one. Yeah, negative one. I think I'll show you here in a second. Yeah. But remember, it'll say negative x. It won't say negative 1x. So you'll see that here. It says negative x. That's a negative 1. And the same thing here. This one says x. There's an invisible 1 in front. All right, so we're going to determine whether lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So we have mn and rs. Go ahead and underline mn with one line, rs with another um, the only reason I say this is a lot of students look at this and they're like, four points, what in the world do I do with four points? You're going to do the, the slope formula twice and then compare the slopes. So the first formula, we're going to find the slope of mn using our formula, y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Um, we read left to right, so we're going to say m is x1, y1, and n is x2, y2. So what is my first y? 3. My second y? 4. My first x? Oops. It is zero. First x is zero, and then my second x is two. So here's how you can double check that you are correct. Um, you should be able to read a coordinate. Zero, three is zero, three, one of the coordinates we started with. Yes. The same thing with the other. We have two, four. Was that a coordinate that we had? Yes. So you should be able to do that. You cannot mix and match. Um, how you want. Um, but we have 3 minus 4, which is negative 1, and 0 minus 2, which is, and this reduces to 1 half. So we're just going to use this later to compare to the other one. Okay, so I'm just highlighting it so we can find it at a later time because we're now going to find the slope of RS. y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So r is my first x and first y. 
and s is my second x and my second y. All right, so which number is my first y? One. And my second y is four. Then my first x, two. And my second x, eight. One minus four, negative three. And then 2 minus 8, this reduces to 1 half. So make sure you watch the positives and the negatives. A negative over negative will always make a positive. So these are the same number, right? They're both 1 half. So what kind of line do we have? Parallel. So we just answer with the word parallel. You can list them as parallel, but we don't have like a symbol for neither. You would just say neither. So parallel was the answer. Questions on this one? Okay. We have two more examples. Find the slope of MN and any slope perpendicular. So we find the slope, and then we want to find the perpendicular slope to this original slope. So Y1 minus Y2 over X1 minus X2. What's my first y? Negative 3. And my second y is 1. My first x, 2. And my second x, negative 4. What happens when I plug in a negative 4 and there was already a negative in the formula? It turns into a positive. So in the top, we have negative 3 minus 1, negative 4. Then we have 2 plus 4, which is 6. Can this be reduced? Yes. What does this reduce to? Negative, negative 2 thirds, right? So that's the first part. And then we're going to find the perpendicular slope. So perpendicular will be the opposite sign. So what will be my perpendicular sign? Positive. And then flip it would be? 3 over 2. That's it. Questions on this one? Okay. This last one is the reason that uh, you asked and I said you might want four different colors. I think this problem's easier when you can see the lines. So if you want to take a second to highlight each line. If you only have one, you could highlight line D. That's pretty much the hardest one for people to see. You will definitely have a question that looks like this on your test. So essentially, we have to find the slopes of each line and then compare them to each other, figure out which ones are parallel and which ones are perpendicular. So we're going to find the slope of each line using the slope formula. So for our first line, we're going to do line A. It's blue on my screen. So we have two points. We have negative 2, a negative 2, and 0, 2. Which of these points do we want to call our first coordinate? Zero and two. Why are you the way that you are? We're going to do left to right. I keep trying to give you a way to be. Why is it easier for you to look right to left? I'd rather not have a negative. Oh, you do you. We're going to have negatives, though. You're going to end up with the same answer if you math correctly. I'm going to say that 0, 2 is my second coordinate. Is the rest of the class okay with this decision? Yes. I think it's easier on my eyes. All right, well, you do you, bud. You do you. What is my first y? My first y. It is, my first y is negative 2. Look at that. We avoided a, uh, 
We avoided a negative there. And then my second y is 2. No, the, your, your reason doesn't make any sense here. What is my first x? Negative 2. And then my second x? 0. Had we done it your way, we would have had a bunch of negatives. Why, yes, we would have. We have minus 2, minus 2, which is negative 4. And then minus 2, minus 0, negative 2. So what does this reduce to? 2. So the slope of the first line is 2. Now we're going to find the slope of, we're just going to go alphabetically. So we'll do line B. So the same formula, y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So again, I'm choosing to read left to right, so I'm going to do 0, negative 1 as our first coordinate, and 2, 3 as our second coordinate. So what is my first y? Negative 1. My second y, 3. My first x, 0. And my second x, 2. All right, and then minus 3 minus, sorry, minus 1 minus 3 is negative 4. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And then this reduces to? Two. We'll deal with that in a second because they are the same number. Yeah, that means they're going to be parallel. But we're going to find line C and then line D. Line C. Give me a second. I'm making room. All right. So again, we use y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So I'm going to say 3, negative 1 is my first x and first y. 4, 2 is my second x, second y. So what am I going to plug in for y1? Negative 1. And then my second y is 2. And then my first x is 3. My second x is 4. Alright, so minus 1 minus 2, negative 3, and then 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. What is this reduced to? Positive 3. So a negative over negative always makes a positive, and then always reduce if you can. So right now we have 2, we have 2, and we have 3. We have one more, and it is line D. So again, using y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. What is, so this one's a little, this is the hardest one for people. Because what are my two coordinates? And 0, negative 1. Yeah, 0, negative 1 is on two lines. So we have x1, y1 is negative 3, 0. And 0, negative 1 is my x2, y2. So my first y is 0, my second y, negative 1. When I plug in that negative 1, there's already a negative there. Turns positive. And then my first y, sorry, my first x, read the wrong letter, is negative 3. My second x is 0. 0 plus 1, minus 3, minus 0. Negative 3. So from here we make decisions. All right, which of these are parallel? So we're going to say line A is parallel to line B. And then which ones are perpendicular? Line C is perpendicular to line D. At this point, you're ready to take out a whiteboard and a marker.
Determine if the two lines are parallel. That is the first thing we are going to do. So look at these and decide if they are parallel. You just say yes or no. Good. What's the slope on the first line? Negative four fifths. And the slope on the second? Four fifths. What do we know about parallel slopes? They have to be the same. Are these two the same slope? They are not. So this one is a no. Go ahead and do this one. Determine if the two lines are parallel. A simple yes or no is good. What's the slope on the first? Two thirds. And the slope on the second? So are they the same slope? They are. Good. Determine if the two lines are parallel. So, how can you figure out if these lines are parallel? What do you need to know? The slopes. So, you're going to find the slopes of each. Good. Make sure you're reduced. I couldn't tell if you could or if you did or not. So check your signs. I think the, some of you are getting your signs wrong. Those are good. Um, check your math. That's correct. Yeah, you need to reduce, and then tell me your answer. This is good. Check your math. Actually, just check what you plugged in. That's good. And then you have to tell me whether or not they're parallel. I just couldn't see yours, Jamari. You wrote really small. Um, so you want to check your signs because a lot of times I ask you what they are, not just if they're parallel or perpendicular. Some of you guys are leaving. Some of you guys are leaving your answer like this, but you do need to reduce. This is, these are the slopes, and then are they parallel or not? They're parallel. You just had to answer it like yes. Okay, so make sure you watch your signs. I'm gonna do it again. Oh, check your signs. Your final answer is right. That's good. Good. Uh, check your board. Mm, check your math. That's good. So I'm not only I'm checking to make sure you not only have your final answer correct, but also your Alright, so we should get good. You should get two. 
on the first one, you should get two thirds on the second. So are they parallel? Mm -hmm. They are not. Determine if the two lines are perpendicular. So determine if the two lines are perpendicular. Good, good. And we are on a new question. Those are all good. Determine if they are perpendicular. Perpendicular, what is the first slope? Negative one fourth and the second is four. Are they the opposite sign and flipped? Yes, so those are yes. Determine if they are perpendicular. Yeah, it's too late now. We, we took longer than the other class. Good. Uh, for that one. Yes, it is a no. So we have one third and three, so they are reciprocals, but are they the opposite sign? So they would not make 90 degrees. Determine if they are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Yes, just don't shorten it that much on a quiz. Good, good, good. I would check yours. Good, good, I would check yours. Good, good. So, the easiest one to check is, are they parallel? For sure not, they would be the same number. Are they the opposite sign? And are they the flipped? So are they perpendicular? Yes, they are perpendicular. All right, determine if the two lines are perpendicular. Uh, no. Check your signs. Check your signs. I know yours is good. And then yours is good. I think your race is good. Red, no, you need to reduce. Not quite. Uh, check your signs. That's good. And that's good. Uh, you need to reduce. Good. So what do we get for the first slope? Five over two. The second slope, you get four over ten, but you need to reduce that. That's two-fifths, not just four over ten. And they should both be positive. So are they perpendicular? That's a no. Determine if the two lines are perpendicular. Good. Good. Uh, good. Sorry, I didn't know what to ask. Good. 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 This over this doesn't make that. Good. 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 So what do we get for our first slope? Two, and then our second slope. So are they perpendicular? Yes. Um, this next question, you're going to determine. Is this new? No. Same one. That's what I thought. Okay, there you go. Uh, determine if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Good. They're the same slope, right? So this should be parallel. Okay. Determine if they're parallel, perpendicular, or neither.
I would check for now. That's good. 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 I think they're good. One of them looks like a two. Uh, check your math. Oh, this is a negative. Mm -hmm. So when you plug it in, it makes positive. Not quite. I'm gonna say this bottom part is wrong somehow. Not quite. Good. All right. So the first one you should have gotten three over three, which is what? One. So that's your first slope. The second one you got two over two, but the slope is one. So if they're the same, which of these are they? Parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Parallel. Parallel. The last thing that you should be able to do is determine if the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. When they don't look like y equals mx plus b. When they don't look like y equals mx plus b, you need to make it look like y equals mx plus b. Sorry, I wrote it in highlighter. Um, but what would you solve for to make it look like this? Y. So I will practice with you here in a second. Um, what would I do first in this 2x plus 3y equals 9? Minus 2x. All right, 3y equals. Can I subtract a letter from a number? No. So you would write them next to each other. Which one would you write first? That negative 2x, right? And you got a plus 9. And then what is my last step to get y alone? Divide by 3. I would divide them each individually by 3 so that you can reduce what you can. So you get y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 3. So what is the slope of the first line? Negative 2 thirds. So you need to figure out what the slope of the second line is by doing the same thing. You need to solve for y equals mx plus b. I'll give you a second to do that. More than a second, obviously. And then decide if they're parallel. It is a yes. You should get negative two thirds x plus plus or minus. Okay. Um, last one. Determine if the two lines are parallel. I think I would check my math. Did you end up getting it? So why'd you give up? I haven't told you to put it away. Come on. Yes, but I would just make sure you. That's a nine. And also, so, also yes. Four. Well, it should be a nine because you divided by nine. That's good.
And then tell me yes or no. So I'll wait for you to. You can come back during your PE. Uh, yeah, that's fine.